Transylvanian Moonrise, a secret initiation in the mysterious land of the gods. Radu Sinemar and Peter Moon What is the basis of your surprise and perplexity? Have you not already been faced with inexorable evidence in this direction? Have you not been granted access to places where few human beings are allowed at the present? Reality can be disturbing and unbelievable at first sight, but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. The craze of alien invasion and the mass manipulation that has been systematically going on for the last decades has largely succeeded to discredit this subject in the eyes and minds of many people, however, I hope you are not amongst them. It would be sad, too, especially that you now have knowledge of so much ultra-secret information in this field. I humbly accepted his reproof. In fact, my intention has not been that of denying the existence of other civilizations in the universe that are much more developed than the human civilization but of expressing my doubt that they could have a positive influence towards the welfare of humanity. In my opinion, to believe or not to believe there are super-developed civilizations in this universe is juvenile, and this is pretty much the level on which such controversies unfold. I am referring to the arguments between some scientists world politicians and certain UFO supporters or those who present indubitable evidence on the subject. All politicians, and not just them, stubbornly deny the presence of these worlds and seek to prove that they do not in fact exist. This extremely conceited and limited idea that we are alone in the universe, however, is based upon well-defined interests concerning total control over humankind. Most problems come from Christians as the influence of the Church, and the Catholic one in particular, is still quite strong throughout the world. For example, if believers were told by the Pope that other beings also exist in the universe, some much more technologically advanced than humans, and were brought clear proof of this, this would almost certainly give rise to a profound conceptual crisis among the masses. Revealing evidence and contacts with other civilizations would irremediably lead to a dramatic decline of the influence and power of manipulation over humanity as humans would then have other options open to themselves that would be oriented towards different horizons from the one that had been imposed until then. The problem is much more complex, however, and is not limited to just these aspects. I was already quite familiar with this subject. Even further, I had the opportunity to see in person the incredible technologies in the projection room and convince myself of the existence of other civilizations in our galaxy by watching the synthesis of some holographic projections. Although I was convinced that the great ensemble in the Busigi Mountains represented the work of an ancient extraterrestrial civilization, Cesar never confirmed it, not even after he revealed to me a great deal of the secret elements of the great expedition he participated in. Hence, from this point of view, the mystery was still hidden to me. I reacted superficially to the information Ripa Sundi was offering me, probably from a primitive ideological reflex that it is very unlikely that humankind is being watched over by more advanced civilizations. At the same time, I was aware that I had no solid support for this thought. On the other hand, the Lama continued to explain, I didn't say I am talking about a terrestrial civilization. I said there are very advanced beings that overlook the well-being of humanity. Their powers and capacities are beyond anything you could think of right now. Well, where are they? I asked in genuine astonishment. Where do they live? Are they among us? Ripa Sundi continued to explain, unperturbed. Their technological and spiritual progress is so great that it allows the members of that civilization to change, like flicking a switch, the frequency of vibration of matter, when they wish to do so. In a way, it is similar to how a yidam acts, but when necessary, they can change the vibration level of their entire civilization by switching from the physical plane to the astral one and back. However, in order to avoid unwanted contact with the present human civilization, which is impure and gross. They are now in a very special and secret area of which only rumors and hypotheses are known. For the most part, this situation lasted until the great discovery in the Busigi Mountains was made a little over a year ago. I kept silent but mentally asked a question with intensity. 
Ripa Sundi answered immediately. Yes, Cesar Brad knows the truth about the respective civilization and the Busigi location, but he has not been allowed yet to say anything about it after the commando team came back from the great expedition, not even to the Romanian or American authorities. At some point during the time spent in the main tunnel, something happened that only Cesar was witness to. The other members of the team did not have access to it. In fact, they do not even know what happened. See Chapter 5 of Transylvanian Sunrise by Radu Sinemar. For further information. This means you know Cesar well, I said enthusiastically. He also told me quite a bit about his grandiose adventure, but some things he didn't share. He told me that he is not yet permitted to, but I think he referred exactly to what you spoke about. I cannot help but wonder though how you got to know Cesar so well that he talked to you about these very secret aspects. He never told me about you." The Lama smiled enigmatically and then began to speak. Oh, but he did speak to you about me, but neither you nor he inferred the truth at that time. It was only after he made the great discovery in the Busigi Mountains, during a very special conjuncture that I created, that he was able to meet me again. I am a very old friend of his, and now, the favorable game of destiny has made it such that you are now able to find out certain information that is very secret. I was trying very hard to identify Ripa Sundi from the information that Cesar had given me, but I did not seem to get any results. Looking at me kindly, the Lama eventually spoke. I closely took care of the education and spiritual training of Cesar Brad who is a very evolved being. I cultivated his exceptional abilities and oriented him in a direction that can never fail. Here the Tibetan stopped for a moment, giving me a last chance to identify him. From the depth of my memories, an intuition was more and more coming to light. The Lama then spoke with much modesty. I am Dr. Sheehan, was all he said. I was taken aback, not knowing what to believe anymore. Cesar had spoken very little about Dr. Sheehan but always very considerately and affectionately. In a way, I could infer that the Tibetan Lama was like a spiritual master during the communist period when he guided Cesar for several years in the secret base near B. Immediately after the 1989 revolution, however, he suddenly disappeared without anyone knowing anything about it. Neither he nor his assistant left any trace or evidence of their disappearance. Cesar told me that when they contacted the Chinese authorities to inform them of the situation, the Chinese initially had a negative reaction and accused the Romanian secret services of the death of the two. A little while after, however, the whole affair was inexplicably forgotten without any explanations and without the mystery ever being solved. I thought that Cesar, due to his special capacities, knew at least part of the truth but did not want to reveal it to me. It is very true that he tried to find me through certain occult ways, the Lama said, but by then he hadn't developed these powers to the point where he was able to suppress certain subtle protection barriers that I manifest in such cases. This protection is justified by the necessity of acting as freely as possible in order to fulfill my spiritual mission while still roughly respecting the norms of modern society. Nevertheless, I don't understand what the specifics of your actions throughout the world are, I said to Ripa Sundi. I gathered that you spent many years in Romania as a Chinese special attaché for paranormal matters. Was that your mission? There are several directions or missions that I fulfill simultaneously, but they are all somehow correlated and this means that they have a common denominator. In order to solve it all efficiently, I have to make certain contacts with people who are involved in one way or another in those situations. This requires that I travel to different places on the globe. Thus, saying I always stay in the same place is an improper turn of phrase. In reality, I travel to many locations in the countries where I have already established contacts. This does not happen, however, in the classical way you are thinking about. I am revealing this secret to you so you can infer that there are many other possibilities that some beings have at their disposal that are beyond the ordinary means a common human being uses to run his daily activities. I am referring to abilities which, according to the standards of present-day humankind, 
are of a paranormal nature and are used in order to act efficiently. You can understand my disappearance from Romania 15 years ago. An important stage had finished and my presence there was simply not necessary anymore. As events unfolded, it was proven that my assessment was true and Cesar lived up to my expectations. Everything that happened afterwards, including the great discovery in the Busigi Mountains, is part of a very complex plan, a multidimensional one, of which there is no need to talk to you about at this time. However, with the passing of time, you will be able to understand more and more detailed fragments of this grandiose action that involves the whole planet and in which you play your own role. The accomplishment of this great project concerning the Earth is a combined effort of several very evolved beings, some of them belonging to other planes of manifestation, as you will soon see for yourself. I was amazed by what I was hearing, but at the same time, I intensely felt the desire to be of use and contribute, as much as I was able, to the realization of this plan. I then wanted to find out more information about the way Ripa Sundi acted in the world. The majority of connections I nurture and have access to are at a governmental level, the Lama continued. Although there are many people in this world fighting against good, there are by all means also people with a pure consciousness who wish to be of use to the nation they belong to and even the entirety of humanity. The higher their roles and responsibility in the governments of the world's powers, the more important is their influence. An example is my connection to certain members of the Chinese government. They have facilitated many of my beneficial interventions, and at the same time, they covered certain strange events that could not be explained. These connections are then transmitted and diversified from one generation to another, but these are not my only contacts. An important role is played by people who possess strong magnetic powers as well as exceptional abilities provided, of course, that they are beneficially oriented. During the times to come, these people are going to be capable of polarizing many others around them, pointing in the correct direction so that others can understand the critical situation of humankind in a way that they can and must efficiently act to deeply transform it. It is good to know that Cesar Brad, due to his discreet but well-integrated interventions, managed to greatly balance the forces in Romania. Everything always needs to be judged from a more subtle point of view than just the physical aspects. An influence is so much stronger when it is first initiated in a subtle causal plane. Only then will it materialize in the physical plane, but the complex manner of its combined effects will be understood by just a few people. Cesar already has the ability to act in this way, but you need to fully understand that in order to have such a capability, the intention of the respective being needs to be very pure. As Ripa Sundi told me all of these things, my feeling was one of profound gratitude for his wisdom and the kindness he was showing me. Although I only knew him for a little while, I could notice striking similarities in my discussion with explanations I got from Cesar during the last couple of years. It was not too hard to imagine that Ripa Sundi often spoke to Cesar as as a master would to his disciple, clarifying many aspects of life and patiently directing him on the path of goodness and righteousness. I felt wonderful and any previous feeling of anguish or irritation disappeared like magic. I was willing to find out as many things as possible in regards to how I could complete my knowledge and refine my ways of acting. The Lama then gave me an explanation that in the beginning seemed surprising. One of the very important aspects you need to be aware of regarding knowledge is that all that beings live and feel during their lives becomes experience for the other beings in the universe. The essential element is that it happens independently from space and time. When you achieve the ability to tune into this field of existence that transcends space and time, you practically have access to all recordings, and that includes all that has ever happened and will ever happen. Amazing! I said delighted. Just tonight, Eleanor spoke to me about the subtle recordings of manifestation but in connection with previous lives. It's true he didn't tell me too many details, but I gather he was referring to the same aspect you are talking to me about now. At that moment, Eleanor felt it necessary to intervene in order to further clarify things. I told him that the power to see previous lives, his or of any other being, 
is based upon the access by consciousness to a supratemporal plane of existence where accurate recordings exist of any type of action that has ever happened in the phenomenal world, Eleanor said, addressing Ripa Sundi. It is like a recording tape of the universe. Perfectly true, the Lama assented seriously. The access to these precise traces left by any being during its passage through manifestation can help you, in a way, benefit from what we could call the experience of the universe. It is very important that this is very well understood. After all, any being within creation is faced with two opposing fundamental existential states, the state of ignorance and the state of knowledge. When I refer to ignorance, I mean that the respective being does not know almost any of the essential laws of the universe it lives in. That's why ignorance makes man live only partially, fragmented and isolated in a very limited realm of existence. Metaphorically speaking, he is living in a very small cage without even being aware of it. On the other hand, knowledge is power. And I'm not talking here about a theoretical scientific knowledge or what is generally labeled as worldly knowledge but rather what makes up universal knowledge. This is infinitely richer and more nuanced than the first, and at the same time, it is the only one that gives access to the higher dimensions of spirit. Yes, but even if they are ignorant, people often live a life that seems good and even happy or abundant, I said. Well, at least what they consider to be happiness and fulfillment. That is true, responded the Lama. They live but in ignorance, and this is exactly why they suffer. Suffering and ignorance complete and fuel one another. However, there is a hidden meaning even in this as only when suffering and troubles reach an unbearable threshold, which sometimes happens after tens or hundreds of successive lives, does a man realize that he can no longer continue that way. That is an essential moment in his evolution starting from which he begins to be more and more aware of his integration within the universe. Of course, there might still be numerous falls and comebacks of his on this path, but it is important that he already has planted in his consciousness and his inner perception the necessity to change something fundamental within himself, and this thought will always act as an impulse to propel him higher and higher. Listening to what Ripa Sundi was saying, I was musing that ignorance is like night time for a man's understanding, like a thick fog that darkens his thinking. As far as I can tell, the condition of the ignorant one is not too far from that of an unknowing animal, I voiced my inner reflections. Even if it might seem exaggerated, know that it reflects the reality, the Lama said. In principle, it all starts from the fundamental difference between man and animal which is self-consciousness. The issue is simple. While a man knows he exists, meaning that he is self-aware and can act in a determined way, the animal acts only by instinct, without knowing it exists. The life of an animal is reduced to a few spontaneous inner impulses and a very limited range of emotions. Nevertheless, among animals, as well as among people, there are noticeable differences that endow some of them, when reaching a certain evolutionary stage, with a rudimentary consciousness that further aids their leap towards the status of a human being with self-awareness. It is obvious, for example, that between a mole and a dolphin there are great differences in regards to the possibilities of understanding and having communication with a being having superior conscious structures, like a man. You mean that the same evolutionary process from a form of inferior consciousness to one of superior consciousness remains valid anywhere else in the physical universe? I intervened. Of course. Besides, you already know how diverse life is within our galaxy. In comparison with our galaxy, however, which is almost nothing, you would be much more surprised to discover an almost unimaginable grandeur in the diversity of life throughout the rest of the universe. A form will always adapt to the specific life conditions existent in the respective corner of the universe whether or not these correspond to the conditions of a human's life. Hence, intelligent forms in the universe are very different and only an immense ego and never-ending stupidity can make people think they are alone in a truly gigantic universe whose real dimensions cannot be conceived or logically understood by the mind's assessment system.